Hi, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text. It's what we've been doing on Sundays now for a while. And uh, today we're on chapter 19, The Attainment of Peace, and section 8, The Attraction of Pain. Your little part is but to give the Holy Spirit the whole idea of sacrifice and to accept the peace he gives instead without the limits that would hold its extension back and so would limit your awareness of it. For what he gives must be extended if you would have its limitless power and use it for the Son of God's release. It is not this you would rid of, be rid of, and having it, you would not limit it. If peace is homeless, so, you, so are you and so am I. And he who is our home is homeless with us. Is this your wish? Would you forever be a wanderer in search of peace? Would you invest your hope of peace and happiness if it must fail? Faith in the eternal is always justified, for the eternal is forever kind, infinite in its patience, and wholly loving. It will only accept you wholly and give you peace. Yet it can unite only with what already is at peace in you, immortal as itself. The body can bring you neither peace nor turmoil, neither joy nor pain. It is a means and not an end. It has no purpose of itself, but only what is given to it. The body will seem to be whatever is the means for reaching the goal that you assign to it. Peace and guilt are both conditions of the mind to be attained, and these conditions are home of the emotion that calls them forth, and therefore is compatible with them. But think you which it is that is compatible with you. <clears throat> That's a tough sentence. But think you which it is that is compatible with you. Here is your choice, and it is free. But all that lies in it will come with it, and what you think you are can never be apart from it. The body is the great seeming betrayer of faith. In it lies disillusionment and the seeds of faithlessness, but only if you ask of what it cannot give. Can your mistake be reasonable grounds for depression and disillusionment and for relative attack on what you think has failed you? Use not your error as the judge of justification for your faithlessness. You have not sinned, but you have been mistaken in what is faithful, and the correction of your mistake will give you grounds for faith. It is impossible to seek for pleasure through the body and not find pain. It is essential that this relationship be understood, for it is one the ego uses as proof of sin. It is not pu really punitive at all. It is but the inevitable result of equating yourself with the body, which is the invitation to pain. For it invites fear to enter and become your purpose. The attraction of guilt must enter with it, and whatever fear directs the body to do is therefore painful. It will share the pain of all illusions, and the illusion of pleasure will be the same as pain. Is this not inevitable? Under fear's orders, the body will pursue guilt, serving its master whose attraction to guilt maintains the whole illusion of its existence. This then is the attraction of pain, ruled by this perception, the idea, the body becomes the servant of pain, seeking it dutifully and obeying the idea that pain is pleasure. It is this idea that underlies all of the ego's heavy investment in the body. And it is this insane relationship that keeps it hidden and yet feeds upon. To you, it teaches that the body's pleasure is happiness. 
yet to itself it whispers it is death. Why should the body be anything to you? Certainly what it is made of is not precious. And just as certainly it has no feeling, it transmit to you the feelings that you want. Like any communication medium, the body receives and sends the messages that is given. It has no feeling for them. All of the feeling with which they are invested is given by the sender and the receiver. The ego and the Holy Spirit both recognize this and both also recognize that here the sender and receiver are the same. The Holy Spirit tells you this with joy. The ego hides it, for it would keep you unaware of it. Who would send messages of hatred and attack if he but understood he sends them to himself? Who would accuse, make guilty, and condemn himself? The ego's messages are always sent away from you in the belief that for your message of attack and guilt will someone other than you suffer. And even if you suffer, yet someone else will suffer more. The great deceiver recognizes that this is not so, but as the enemy of peace, it urges you to send out all your messages of hate and free yourself. And to convince you this is possible, it bids the body search for pain in attack upon another, calling it pleasure and offering it to you as freedom from attack. Here, not is madness, and believe not the impossible is true. Forget not that the ego has dedicated the body to the goal of sin and places in it all its faith that this can be accomplished. Its sad disciples chant the body's praise continually in solemn celebration of the ego's rule. Not one but must believe that yielding to the attraction of guilt is the escape from pain. Not one, but must regard the body as himself, without which he would die, and yet within which is his death equally inevitable. It is not given to the ego's disciples to realize that they have dedicated themselves to death. Freedom is offered them, but they have not accepted it. And what is offered must also be received to be truly given. For the Holy Spirit, too, is a communication medium receiving from the Father and offering his messages unto the Son. Like the ego, the Holy Spirit is both the sender and the receiver. For what is sent through him returns to him, seeking itself along the way and finding what it seeks. So does the ego find the death it seeks, returning it to you. Well, this is a, a cumbersome chapter to read, uh, or section of this chapter to read. Um, the Attraction of Pain. I think that, that the thing to, to remember as you're reading this section is to remember that you aren't your body, right? You are living in this body. This is the housing for you. But when this body ceases to function, you will not cease to be. Your spirit will go on, will live on outside of your body and you'll return to source. So um, pain is a 3D uh, physical manifestation. When we are not in physical form, we do not experience pain. So this is totally a function of your body and your housing. So I don't know if that makes any uh, sense or helps at all uh, with this lesson today. If you need additional support, you can feel free to reach out to me. 907-351-3003, uh, message me on Facebook or YouTube or SoundCloud or through my websites, Angels Rest.
no, sorry, that's my lodging website, lindalamp.com and lindalamp.shop. Much love and namaste.